Darcy's laws for groundwater are some of the most important calculations we can make uh, in this subject. So when we look at Darcy's laws, we will be doing sample problems to calculate discharge, the amount or volume of water flowing in, through the ground over a given amount of time, and the velocity of the groundwater, how quickly is it moving from one point to another. So looking at discharge, we have the equation Q, discharge, think quantity, equals K, which you can see at the bottom is hydraulic conductivity, often given in centimeters per second, times delta H. Delta H in this figure is the difference in head, and head is often uh, measured in meters above sea level, so we're looking at the elevation of the water table in one location minus the elevation of the water table or potentiometric surface in another location. Delta L is the distance on the map between the two points, or the two wells that are being measured, and A is the cross-sectional area of the aquifer through which the water is flowing. So imagine the water flowing out from this image. So let's go ahead and do a sample problem. We have calculate the discharge in cubic meters per hour in an aquifer given the following. The hydraulic conductivity is 5.0 times 10 to the minus third centimeters per second. Two wells, two kilometers apart, have heads of 150 MASL is meters above sea level, and 50 meters above sea level, and the cross-sectional area of the aquifer is 1,000 square meters. So the first thing that we want to do is I like to highlight the units that we want the answer in. So we're told to calculate the discharge in cubic meters per hour. So that means everything that has a distance associated with it, like heads are in meters, uh, the area is in square meters, the hydraulic conductivity has centimeters, everything with a distance unit has to be in meters, everything with a time unit has to be in hours. So what you can see is that we're going to have to do some unit conversion in order to calculate our discharge, which again I'm going to write the equation for. Q equals K times delta H over delta L times A. So let's go through and calculate each of our variables that we need for the equation to see are they in the units that we need and then we can plug them into our equation. So let's start with K. We're told for K the hydraulic conductivity is 5.0 times 10 to the minus third centimeters per second. So scientific notation, the what we're being told is minus three the minus means we're going to move the decimal point to the left the three tells us how many times so 5.0, we're going to move the decimal place three places to the left to make it a real number, which is going to be 0 0.005 centimeters per second. So 0 0.005 centimeters over one second is the exact same thing as 5.0 times 10 to the minus third centimeters per second. I've written it as a fraction because we need to change the units. We need meters and we need hours. So we need to change the centimeters to meters. We need to change the seconds into hours. To do this, we set up stoichiometry. The first thing that we'll convert is the distance. If centimeters are on top in the first fraction, that means when we set up the second one, they have to go in the bottom. And we know that in one meter, there are 100 centimeters. Centimeters on the bottom here, they're on the top here. They now cancel, and our unit for distance will be in meters. We also need to convert the seconds to hours. So we set up a fraction to do that. So we know that we can take seconds. They're at the bottom of the first fraction, so they go on the top of this one. We can convert that to minutes, but we're not done because we also need to convert the minutes to hours. So we have to write two fractions. So seconds are on the bottom here, 
they go on the top of our first time conversion. That way they will cancel. We know 60 seconds are in one minute. We're not done because we want our answer in per hour, so we have to set up a fraction where we convert minutes on top, so they cancel with these minutes, to hours. So when we cross out those units, the only units we have not canceled out, meters, and then we have per hour because it's on the bottom. And that's what we want our units to be in, meters and per hour. So we go ahead and plug this into our calculator. And the way that it works, if a number is on top, you multiply. If the number is on the bottom, you divide. So we take 0 .005 divided by 100 times 60 times 60. And we find that our hydraulic conductivity in meters per hour is 0 0.18. So go ahead and write that. So this is now in the units of what we want our answer in. We can plug that in for K in our discharge equation. So we have our 0 0.18 meters per hour times. The next part is delta H and delta L. So what we are told for those, we'll start with delta H. The heads are 150 meters above sea level and 50 meters above sea level. Delta H is the change in head or the difference. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 50 meters above sea level from 150 meters above sea level. So we write 150, and I'm going to get rid of the above sea level, we'll just call it meters, minus 50 meters is 100 meters. So because this is in the same units, meters, that we want our answer in, we can plug in delta H to our equation. So that's 100 meters. And it goes over delta L. For delta L, we're told the two wells are two kilometers apart. Now you'll see right away that two kilometers is not the units that we want our answer in. We want our answer in meters or cubic meters per hour. So what we need to do is we need to convert the two kilometers into meters. There are 1,000 meters per kilometer, so we set up fractions just like we did for unit conversion up here. We put the two kilometers over one. Kilometers are on top here, so they go on the bottom in the next fraction. There are again 1,000 meters for every one kilometer. So we cancel out the kilometer units. We take two times 1,000, and we find that Delta L in meters is 2,000 meters. So we can go ahead and plug that in to our equation up here. And the last thing that we need is the area. And we're told the area is 1,000 meters squared, which is already in the units that we want our answer in, distances in meters. So we can plug this without any conversion directly into our equation up here. Before we plug this into our calculator, we can see we have meters over meters, so those will cancel. So I'll go ahead and cross those out. And what we're doing is we're double checking that when we multiply this out that our answer comes to meters cubed per hour. So because this becomes unitless, we have meters per hour times meters squared. We are going to finish with meters cubed per hour or cubic meters per hour. So let's go ahead and plug this into a calculator, and we have 0 0.18 times 100 divided by 2,000 times 1,000. And what we figure out is that our discharge, given the information that we were, is 9.0 cubic meters per hour. So we converted the units for everything, we plugged it into our discharge equation, and we found that our discharge is 9 cubic meters per hour. The last calculation for Darcy's Laws is groundwater velocity. 
ground water velocity, V, velocity, equals K, which again is hydraulic conductivity, divided by porosity. Porosity is the open spaces in the geologic material, so it's the space between the grains, given as a percentage of the volume as a whole. And then delta H and delta L remain the same. So velocity is hydraulic conductivity over porosity times change in head over the distance between the two points. So let's go ahead and do a sample problem for groundwater velocity. Calculate the velocity in meters per hour. So I'm going to highlight that because those are the units that we want our answer in. Meters per hour. Oops. That so calculate the velocity in meters per hour in an aquifer given the following. The hydraulic conductivity is 5.0 times 10 to the minus third centimeters per second. Two wells 2.0 kilometers apart have heads of 150 meters above sea level and 50 meters above sea level. And the porosity of the aquifer is 30%. So I'm going to write the equation for velocity. K over P times delta H over delta L. We're going to start with hydraulic conductivity. Again, what we need to do is we need to convert the units that hydraulic conductivity was given in into the units that we want our answer in. So again, 5.0 times 10 to the minus third. The minus three tells us move the decimal point three places to the left. It becomes 0 0.005 centimeters over one second. And again, our units are not what we want the answer in, so we have to set up stoichiometry with fractions to convert to the units that we want our answer in. So first we'll do the distance, one meter over 100 centimeters, because centimeters are on top here. They have to go on the bottom in the next one. They will cancel, so our distance will be left in meters, which is what we want our distance unit to be in. We have to convert the seconds, or per seconds, because it's on the bottom of the fraction, to per hour. So 60 seconds are in one minute, and 60 minutes are in one hour. And when I hold this up, we put the seconds on top in the first fraction for time because they were on the bottom here. They've canceled. Then the next one, we see minutes are on the bottom. We put minutes on top so that they can cancel. And we can plug this into our calculator. So we have 0 .005 centimeters divided by 100 times 60 times 60. We find that the hydraulic conductivity is 0 0.18 meters per hour. And because that's in the units that we want our answer in, we can plug that in to our equation for velocity. The next unit that we need is P, porosity. At the end we're told the porosity of the aquifer is 30 percent, but we want this to be unitless so to get rid of that percentage sign, we cross out the sign and divide this number by 100. So we figure out 30% as a real number is 0 0.30. So we take that and we plug it into our equation for porosity. And the reason we know that we want it unitless is look at the units of hydraulic conductivity, meters per hour. They're the exact same as what we want our answer in. So we want everything else to either be unitless or to cancel. The next part of the equation is delta H over delta L. For delta H, we have heads of 150 meters and 50 meters. Delta H, again, is the difference between the two, so we take 150 meters minus 50 meters. Delta H is 100 meters. And again, we know that, del that uh, K is already in the units we want our answer in. So what we need to be sure to do is that delta L, two kilometers, has to be in meters so that the meters in delta H 
will cancel with the meters in delta L. So we go ahead and write the meters for delta H into our equation. And we can solve delta L now. Two kilometers is the distance that we're told. Again, we need to do a conversion because we don't want kilometers, we want meters. We know there are 1,000 meters per every one kilometer. Kilometers are on the bottom because they were on the top over here. So they will cancel. Two times 1,000. We know that delta L in meters is 2,000 meters. We are now ready to plug this into our calculator. So for the velocity, and you can see again, check the units. K is in meters per hour, which is what we want our answer in. P is unitless. Meters over meters for delta H and delta L will cancel. So our answer will be in meters per hour. So plugging this into our calculator, we have 0 0.18 divided by 0 0.30 times 100 divided by 2,000. And what we find is that our velocity in meters per hour is 0 0.03 meters per hour. This is, again, the units that our answer was asked for. We have completed calculating the velocity in this aquifer, given the information that we were. These are some of the calculations that you can expect to make for Darcy's Laws in a groundwater lab for an introductory geology course.